It's a glorious autumn afternoon here in small South Carolina town of Clinton. We're at Bailey Memorial Stadium for the Big South Game of the Week. The Presbyterian Blue Hose with their final tune-up for conference play, taking on the Charlotte 49ers. Good afternoon, everybody. Evan Lepler with my broadcast partner, Nate Ross. Delighted to have you with us. Nice crowd on hand, many fans in the green and white supporting the 49ers. And the fans here in Clinton love their cowbells. Well, it's family weekend. It's a great crowd. Charlotte brought a great cow from about two and a half hours away. So this should be fun. Charlotte two and two with victories over Campbell and Chawan the first two weeks. Losses to NC Central and at James Madison. In their first road game last week, Brad Lambert said they're not gonna do anything different this week in terms of the logistics of the road trip, trying to keep it the same despite the result. Brad Lambert, the head coach of the 49ers, very pleased with how things went last week in Harrisonburg. Presbyterian will kick it off, Charlotte will get the first Possession. It's a good move by Coach Lambert. A lot of freshmen, a lot of redshirt freshmen on a first-year program. You don't want to change up the routine. You want to keep things going the same way, no matter the result, and that's what he's doing. Brent Wilson will kick it off for the Blue Hose. Charlotte has Mikel Hunter and Marte Maddox back to return. Both these teams take the field today thinking that this is a win, but only one can win it. Short kickoff taken at the 12. Maddox crossed the 30 and gets knocked down at the 34. A flag thrown in late and we'll get introduced to our referee Stuart Mullins pretty quickly part of this ACC crew and we'll be talking a little bit more about the refs today than normal. A nice return will be backed up 10 yards. This is the first ever Big South game Nate with video instant replay review. This is big implications. This is a big The 49ers with Hunter and Maddox back to receive. Low line drive, one hops into the chest of Maddox. He takes it across the 30. Beg your pardon, that's number 25, Khalif Phillips on that return. And chance to completely change the field position game. Absolutely flip it on him. Hunter back. Waves for the fair catch and hauls it in right around the 14 yard line. Under eight minutes to go here in the second quarter. Matt Johnson was picked off his last throw. We'll see what he does with his next throw. Back in Clinton, South Carolina, this is the Big South Game of the Week presented by BB&T. Evan Leffler with Nate Ross inside our BB&T broadcast booth. The Charlotte 49ers have run off 28 straight points, taking advantage of the short field after Desmond Cooper's interception. McQuay Mays dragged down. Daquan Lucas with the tackle from behind and again Mays nowhere to go. It'll be first and 10 from the 20 for Presbyterian. Ability to take the ball away. The secondary has a slogan and it's something that the secondary coach, James Adams, has instituted, accountability TCB. 
And TCB stands for a bunch of things. Taking care of business, taking care of the ball, and taking care of your brother. And they have a sled that the secondary pushes around for conditioning purposes. And on that sled, painted accountability TCB. Short punt, scooped up near the 40. And Mikel Hunter takes it to the 42-yard line. And that's where Charlotte, up by 21 points, will take over. Do you think the 49ers are going to slow down at all? No way. process of beginning the Charlotte football program dates all the way back to December of 2006 became a, a done deal a couple years later March of 2011 Brad Lambert elevated from the defensive coordinator at Wake Forest hired his head coach at Charlotte and their first game against Campbell could not have gone better the second play from scrimmage Mark Hogan had an interception return for a touchdown, 32 yard scamper, 46 seconds in. The 49ers had a lead and that was really special for Mark Hogan, a guy who was on the first ever team at Georgia State, also played baseball at Georgia State, but he transferred to Charlotte for graduate school after graduating from Georgia State, the double major in finance and business management. And he has been an invaluable resource for Brad Lambert McQuay Mays across the 30, and he gets stomped. Drilled by Cortez Nixon. And I hope the fire marshal is not watching this broadcast, but they had a 14,000-seat stadium, which is going to grow tremendously when they get in Conference USA, and they had over 16,000 first home game. Pretty good. Well, Presbyterian led 14-7 at one point, but the 49ers have scored 38 straight points, 45-14 with 10-20 to go in the fourth quarter. To stay loose and run in that 5K. They can take my place. You're not running in the 5K? No, I've run in a few, but my 5K days are over. I bet you you could, you know. I ran one crawl in, across the finish line. I ran in one in Boone once. We ran it up to the Cone Mansion, and I was breathing so hard at the top of the mountain, they gave me the water, I couldn't swallow it. It was up the mountain and down the mountain. Glad you survived. There's a nice defensive play at the line of scrimmage. Devin Clegg got his hand on Caleb Griffin's pass. Clegg, a redshirt freshman from Burlington's Walter Williams High School. That's what you are taught when the quarterback goes into motion, get your hands up and either deflect it or bother him. He deflected it. Good job. Well, I don't care what sport it is, baseball, basketball, football, get him out. He'll learn quicker. Griffin slings it down for Antigua. That's a first down. Near the 50-yard line, Cortez Nixon tripped him up. One thing about Caleb Griffin today, he has completed a high percentage of his passes. Well, he threw a couple picks, but you're right. He has thrown the ball accurately when he wasn't pressured. And that time, Antigua just found the open spot in the zone. He found Antigua, and he tried to make a big play. of. I don't blame him at this situation in this time of the game. Griffin now 22 for 31, 177 yards. Looks left, hits the backup tight end, Andrew Osborne. Uh, and will move the chains again down inside the 40-yard line. They run that play many times today. They obviously have a spread formation. They send everybody deep. And when the linebackers drop, they send the tight end under and under the linebackers, and it's good for five or six, and that time for a lot more to Andrew Osborne. Inside handoff for Roberts. He'll go inside the 35. You know, this was a two-touchdown game at the half, and I think way back to the first half, Presbyterian was up 14-7. The two interceptions by Griffin early in the second half really did this Presbyterian team in. It created too deep of a hole to dig out of. And both thrown deep into coverage. As we said, the long balls, he hasn't been as accurate as he has on the short throws today. It comes a long one right here, and that's pretty accurate. Antigua went up for it and made the catch. Town to the seven yard line. 
That was another underthrown ball, but Antigua made the adjustment. Toby Antigua, six foot four, uses all six foot four of that to get it. A little underthrown, he rips it out of the defender's hand, makes a nice catch. Simultaneous reception goes to the offense. Maybe he underthrew it on purpose because Alex Petsky, the safety, was nearby behind the plate of pants. Well, that's like 21st century throws, the back shoulder throw. It's under and behind the receiver. So you get it and the defense doesn't. Demarcus Rouse with the carry on first and goal. And I, he gained two. I keep feeding Rouse. He had a heck of a game early. He had a little low in the middle there. Now he's coming back. Give him the football. Give him a touchdown. Better get in the huddle and tell your line. Let's help out our main man here. Hallams and Antigua, the receivers off to the left. Antigua in motion. They give us to Rouse. Powers it to about the three before he stood up. There's eight white jerseys tackling that football. That's what they do. Now, granted, they're all in a tight area because the ball's inside the five. But still, they've done it all day long. And as you said, that's probably how they got all those takeaways this year. One guy stands him up, everybody else tries to tackle the football. Two more takeaways today. Now 19 and five games. Snap. Something didn't but, look right there. Yeah, there was a, a late whistle. There was clearly contact. Tanner Fleming, the backup nose guard, jumped early. I was watching the game earlier this year in the NFL, and the referee said, well, I'll wait until after we get the call. Offside, defense, number 97, made contact with an offensive player, half the distance to the goal, still third down. Referee said, illegal procedure on the offense, everybody but the center. And that's how he called it, and that's exactly what happened. This time the defense was offside. But that was a good way to call it. Center just got the snap wrong. Everybody went but him. All right, Mr. Rouse. It's six for the home crowd. Third and goal from the two. Griffin, wow. Intercepted, no incomplete. He threw it short. Cortez Nixon was there. Looked like the pass was intended for Nixon we instead of Antigua. We talked about how great communication between Caleb Griffin and his receivers. That was not the case there. Either Nixon went the wrong way or the quarterback threw it the wrong way, but he threw it right to the defender. Probably should have been an inside route that wasn't run. The adjustment made by one and not the other. Two guys not on the same page. Luckily, not another turnover. Mackey running back into the game. Rouse will be the single back behind Griffin. Is that trips crazy formation to the top of your screen. They've run it a couple times. Last time they had this three wide outs stacked up like this, it was a handoff up the middle. And Griffin wants to talk it over. 6.30. Seven to go in the fourth quarter. Back to, obviously, 100 years ago, but really, really a cool thing to do. A great job done by the athletic department and an outside uh, agency to put that together. Demarcus Rouse on fourth down and a touchdown for the Blue Hose. He earned that one. Had a tough day today. Good job early in the game and then Got him on the edge a little bit, and a couple times when he's gotten to the edge, he's been more productive. Turns a corner, gets it north and south, and gets in the end zone. Good job, Mr. Rouse. They need that. They need that mentally. Obviously, they might get the ball back if they can keep Charlotte to three downs and out, but they needed that touchdown, and so did DeMarcus Rouse. Second touchdown for Rouse, a two-yard score. Ten plays, 67 yards, and 347, and the extra point is good. 6.33 to play. The Blue Hoes with a score, but it's still the 49ers by 24 points here in Clinton. For Charlotte. Not what the home team fans wanted to see for family weekend, but a great surge of offense for the 49ers. And Coach Brad Lambert, and it's going to be a fun bus ride back to Charlotte after this one. The first ever road victory for Charlotte 49ers football. Good point. Post-game meal tastes so much better after you win on that bus. 
they might rip up the artificial surface and put grass in too because it's the first game they've ever won on grass, first game they've ever played on real grass. Third and six. Roberts stopped shy of the first down. Devin Clegg, the tackle. I want to thank Presbyterian for their great hospitality here. Simon Whitaker does a great job with the notes. And It's going to go into victory formation just to run it out. So, Let's see what happens here. Handoff goes to Roberts, and he'll get the first down across the 30. That'll take us under a minute once the clock restarts. Harold Nichols in his fifth year. So many limitations here at PC, but he's trying to build up this program as a Division I school. The smallest Division I school in the nation in terms of enrollment. This is a school of 1,200 playing against a school of over 20,000 today. And was not a Division I program when he came here. Took that through the transition like Brian Reese and I spoke about before the game we showed at halftime that they are now a full-fledged Division I program in the Big South. They weren't more scholarships. Obviously, you have to build up a base just like they're doing on the other side of the field at UNC Charlotte as well. We got 30 seconds. What do you think Charlotte is going to do against the other Big South teams that they've got on their schedule? Gardner-Webb, Charleston Southern, Coastal Carolina. It's going to be difficult. I mean, uh, the Blue Hose are not the best team in the Big South. They're a talented football team. Those other teams you mentioned are going to fight for the Big South Championship along with Liberty. So I think it's going to be a tough haul for them. They have a great contingent that follows them on the road as today. It'll be a good first season test for Coach Lambert and his staff. Looks like all those Charlotte fans enjoyed the trip. A worthwhile excursion down to South Carolina as the 49ers take down the Blue Hose 45 to 21. Matt Johnson our Hardy's player of the game. He really set the tone, throwing the ball, moving the ball down the field. Very talented young QB. Well, in this offense, not only do you have to throw it, he ran it a little bit, and then you got to manage by changing the play or reading the play on that read option. So I think he did everything exceptionally well. I'm sure they'll correct the little mistakes, but he's getting better every game. That's all you want. 45-21, the final score for Nate Ross. This is Evan Lepler saying so long from Clinton, South Carolina to watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks. Log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.